Okay, this is the long-awaited follow-up to how to set up a portable TV studio um, using Blackmagic's ATEM TV switcher. Uh, I did a short one without explanation, but what I'll show you now is all the gear. Portable, kind of a relative term, given that you still need a heap of gear. And uh, this is kind of the selection of stuff. Um, but it does allow you to set this gear up and have multiple camera um, live switched TV production for either live streaming or uh, recording on site and then you can output files later on. Um, this kind of setup, we've used it for sports, um, it, it's, it'll be good for a church or any kind of small sporting club um, because using ATEM, the ATEM switcher is a pretty cheap solution and it's pretty flexible, you can use all kinds of cameras as well which I'll take you through. Okay, this is the heart of the system, um, which is the ATM television studio by Blackmagic. Um, and we put this kit together. This is in a portable flight case. Um, what we have here at the top basically is a power conditioner, um, a couple of Blackmagic's high res monitors, the TV studio itself, and then um, down the bottom there is the audio processing unit. The back, of course, is a quagmire of plugs. Um, I'll take you through those in a minute. But I wanted to show you the really cheap setup we initially did. Really cheap. After that switching gear, we got these cheap Sony um, camcorders. They're kind of almost like <laughs> mobile phones, actually. They charge with a USB plug. And they're kind of amazingly light. Like, they weigh nothing. I don't know maybe like 80 grams or something they're effectively just like mobile phones even the battery in them is like a tiny mobile phone battery which plugs in you know, charges via USB they've got a decent lens like they're just really basic but what they do have is HDMI out and then we have um, converters that take the HDMI out and change it to SDI so we can throw it long distance now those were dirt cheap cameras we bought two of them um, and we bought one more high quality, so we had two dirt cheap ones and, a, and one higher quality camera, which is the main camera. Um, and then we picked up these very cheap Velbon tripods. Um, what are they? PH248s. Really basic, lightweight, you know, not great for... They don't have a fluid head or anything. I mean, that it says it's got a fluid head, but... I don't think that's actually true. Um, I mean, it might be, but it's not a fluid head as you would expect for smooth panning video. Um, we have one good tripod for the good camera. That's the one that moves. And then these are just generally for locked off cameras that we switch to, and that's for the cheaper ones. Now, flexibility of this um, setup is that we're actually going to be using uh, a Sony EX1 like for the shoot this weekend next weekend we're going to be using a Sony EX1 like really high quality cameras which we can plug in um, they've got SDI out but for the cheapest possible setup you can you can use cameras just something really simple like these it's a very flexible setup right here's one of the bigger chunks of thing stuff you're gonna carry around cables so we have a variety of extension leads but also um, yeah mini HDMI to the bigger HDMI for coming out of the camera and really long high quality SDI cables um, and a, uh, some big HDMI as well but these these things are the um, one of the critical parts it's a, it's a battery powered converter HDMI to SDI. Now we haven't we've been able to plug these things in, so we haven't had to use the battery part of it yet. But it allows you to um, input HDMI, which comes out of the cheaper cameras, because the pro cameras will have um, SDI, but most of the cheaper cameras don't. But these things aren't that expensive, um, and they'll throw the SDI so that you can go over long distance, because you can't very simply without boosters and all kinds of garbage. You can't um, throw video signal a long way uh, via HDMI cables so that's why we use the SDI. Ok 
Okay, um, I'm just starting to set up the, this TV studio part. I'm running it off a Dell, a pretty powerful Dell laptop, although it's a bit old now, it's a Precision M6400. Um, now, I always kind of leave a power board stuck in the back of this. I only have one cord plugged in there because that runs into the power conditioner. And then these other plugs, you, I bought these just off eBay, they're a cheap, um, kettle cord to a normal power adapter um, and things like the black magic and that are actually plugged into the power conditioner so all the other things are being run off the power conditioner uh, and then a network cable into the PC uh, now the reason I'm running a you don't need a super powerful um, PC to run the switcher uh, but you do need a really powerful one if you want to record the video that's what I found really trips it up if you want to actually record the video live stream so you have a good file you can burn to DVD later on you need a fairly good processor to be able to crunch that while you're doing the switching cables cables and more cables um, three big SDI's that is a large HDMI cable and that was just, that was about the furthest we could actually um, go that's a small one there. this one I can't remember how much it is I think it may be five meter one um, that was the furthest we could go without having to amplify the HDMI those little HDMI's is for plugging the camera into those um, and then we've got some smaller ones which have the small HDMI um, like micro and mini HDMI to come out of other types of cameras um, and then that's just a long Cat5 cable if you want to have the switcher distant from the computer. Okay, so each camera you set up, um, this is using the relatively good camera, the one with the G lens. Um, so each camera basically has big SDI cable to go to the TV studio, the Blackmagic converter, um, a standard HDMI cable to go into the converter and then each one we run a power cord with a double adapter with bodge but that powers both the camera and the converter um, and each one basically has the same setup uh, if you have a bigger um, more professional camera you don't need the black magic converter this one actually has HDMI uh, sorry SDI out um, so we can just run the SDI cable straight to the TV studio. So of course as with all technology uh, once I got the thing connected um, it immediately wanted a firmware update. So I'm downloading the firmware update right now it's gonna take a while but cameras are connecting to the, to the studio there. So I've got the three cameras um, as I mentioned, you've got a HDMI cable running into the Blackmagic converter through the SDI cable and into the back of the ATEM studio. So it has a bunch of ports on the back there for HDMI in and SDI in. Um, and I've got, I'm actually using the the better camera to film this. Um, so I'm just using one of those little baby cheapies um, on here just for a test so that's the same again HDMI out to the Blackmagic converter and off to the studio simple so of course as with everything technology related this thing hasn't been run for a while so um, we have to do system updates Well, it's a painful install as usual um, with any technology. At least this thing is like working for the to receive the signals from the cameras. Um, but I can't switch obviously to the preview and live till it's going. Um, just something while that's happening, we bought um, to do voiceover while we're doing especially like games and stuff. Um, and it shows you how the mics can work. We've got a little mixer, an eight channel mixer. Um, that's just a 
cables for it but we also bought a couple of sure um, microphones simple ones um, and I can run that <coughs> as you can see test test well very low level because it's not a powered mic but I can run that directly into the um, audio processor there you can also of course take sound from any of these cameras the HDMI and any of these cameras but if we run the sound through the mixer um, and you know we've got a couple of cheap mic stand there but um, yeah we run the sound through the mixer we can actually mix a couple of mics together and that was good for voiceover for sporting events you could also use that if you're doing like a church or a theatre production okay it's restarting the ATEM TV studio so I just lost display while because when I fired up the new version of the software it said uh, we also need to update the TV switcher so it's doing a firmware update on that um, I got an older version of the software from Blackmagic Design's website because this is a PC I'm going to dedicate to this switcher and it's running um, Windows 7 the newer ones run out uh, support 8 and 10 it said so I assume when this restarts it'll all work hopefully fingers crossed okay well the software updates done um, it looks a little different um, there's a little panel that came up um, like a setup panel with the IP address um, it's always a pain in the butt to get the IP address of the PC to match the switcher but anyway it fired up and it looks a little different these look like more physical buttons than the buttons I had before now um, I don't have anything on one because that's HDMI but theoretically if I hit the keys here I can switch new am I or not oh uh, yes I can okay yeah yeah cool all right so the that's the preview yeah okay <laughs> all right take me a while so you see I'm switching around there camera one two three and the preview window is changing down there and the live the program is camera one so if I go to say camera four which is that little cubby house then that is my live and then the preview is on the other keyboard controls cool all right three cameras working that all seems to be working quite well